I'm Gabe Urrutia, author of Miami Cocktails, professor at the FIU Chaplin School of Hospitality, and wine, beer, and spirits educator. I'm traveling the United States searching for the best food and drink while smoking Davidoff cigars with friends. Join me for Time with Tastemakers. Hi, my name is Gabe Urrutia, and we're coming to you with the first edition of the Davidoff Gastronomy Series. And I think, you know, the first thing we want to do is highlight the best bartenders and chefs all around the world. So we wanted to start off with Ben Potts from Beaker and & Gray and the Sylvester. But before we do that, I see this gorgeous bar behind us. Is it possible mm -hmm. to get a cocktail? Absolutely, Gabe. Let's do this. Come on and step, 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 step. Oh, 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 oh. Get on up, 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 up. Why don't you come on and step, 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 step? That was so awesome watching you back there. Oh man, my pleasure. Tell us what's in here actually. So I wanted to make a nice cocktail. I know you're a big fan of music. So this cocktail is called Foster the Bananas. So Foster the People, right? I yeah, guess, yeah, exactly. awesome, you awesome. It. Nailed it. I love it. So Foster the Bananas, uh, it's an Aberfeldy 12 year cocktail. Uh, it has a clarified Mauro cordial has creme de cacao, white, of course, hence why it's so clear, and a spiced caramel bitters. And I just love how gorgeous, I mean, you can just see the whole cocktail in there, right? You still get a little bit of that um, kind of de-aging from, from Aberfeldy, so um, some of that maturation, but you can see how it clears out towards the end. So it's a gorgeous cocktail. So first and foremost, cheers, man. Cheers. The bananas just rock and roll in there. Mm -hmm. um, I really love that the creme de cacao is almost a backbone. Um, and just really highlights some of those kind of crazier notes that are in Aberfeldy, but also I get a little bit of that honey really coming through also mm -hmm. um, from the fermentation and maturation process. It's a perfectly awesome made cocktail. I hope I can taste this on the menu soon. So this is badass, man. We'll see. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey of Beaker and Gray in the Sylvester, right? Sure. These are two places that didn't exist. I mean, Beaker, I don't even know what Beaker and Gray was before it was Beaker and Gray, mm -hmm. but you know, just to let you guys know, we're actually going to be kicking off our Davidoff gastronomy at Beaker and Gray um, next month, uh, which is going to be huge, right? Because we're going to be working with your friend and also who is an incredible chef, mm -hmm. um, and Chef Brian, right? Yep. Exactly. So tell us a little bit of, of what was the inspiration to even open Beaker and Gray, and and how long it's been. I think it's been quite a while, right? Yeah, I actually forget often. Uh, I think it's been five years, uh, especially with you know everything that's going on. We kind of had to take a couple breaks, but basically Brian and I found ourselves in, both in the hospitality industry. Uh, I started off as a bar back at a dive bar called Pretty Lounge, rest in peace. Uh, and then Brian, he worked his way up to eventually become the executive chef at uh, Sushi Samba. Miami Beach and then also Coral Gables when it was around and one day he came up to me and he was like look I'm tired of working for other people I think uh, my family and I are gonna open a restaurant uh, do you want in and at that point I'd been a, a bartender at you know two bars so I was like absolutely I'm ready uh, and I you know we Miami just, yeah I know well, take what you can get right so yeah, we decided to open Beaker and Gray, and you know, Beaker and Gray was a warehouse. Originally, the building was an ice factory back in the 20s. Uh, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's we decided to get together and open it. We wanted to 
pay homage to our tools. Hence, a beaker, which is a mixing glass used by bartenders, and a gray spoon, which is a tool used by chefs for plating and for people who really take pride in their craft. And I really love that because both of you guys are locals. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you knew each other before you were even in the industry. Yep. So it's something that it, it's almost a point of passion for you guys to really bring this together, something so amazing um, for South Florida. And also the, just the fact, you know, you guys are an award-winning um, kind of restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. But I can never kind of not think about the bar side of that as well. So tell me a little bit about the setup that you have with a gorgeous bar and a restaurant and what synergies you guys have together. So when we decided to open Beaker and Gray, we wanted the beverage component to be a huge part of it, right? A lot of restaurants that open up, it's kind of like an afterthought. You know, they say, okay, we're gonna have this incredible chef come in, we're gonna have all this beautiful decor, and we're gonna put the bar in the corner over there and it's gonna be a couple people just whipping up some drinks and not really caring about what they do. Obviously with the resurgence of the cocktail movement, uh, just people really caring more about what they're drinking, we saw an opportunity and we took it. So we decided to put a massive bar there. Uh, it mirrors the kitchen uh, and we use ingredients from the kitchen very often uh, to work on the cocktails that we have there. So they're very culinarily focused uh, and you know, a lot of twists on classics, but we do like to work with the kitchen to develop things. And we're doing such cool things now. So next month we're coming up against um, the Davidoff Gastronomy Series at Beaker and Gray. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be kind of smoking a gorgeous cigar, sipping on incredible cocktails and eating at the same time, which you really don't see that in Miami, right? You probably maybe go have a smoke after mm -hmm. uh, your dinner, but we're actually gonna be able to do this all together. So I'm excited to see how that comes together, but what was the inspiration for some of these cocktails? Because they, they I, I mean, I got a chance to get a sneak peek at it and it's incredible. So every, everything that I do behind the bar is always a collaborative effort with my whole team. In this case, I work hand in hand with the bar manager over there, uh, Joseph Jebeline. And he and I sat together, we reviewed the tasting notes from the cigars, from the cuisine that Brian wanted to pair with the cigars. And we worked on three different cocktails that are both uh, suitable for the cuisine and the cigars. So a nice light entry for the first cocktail, something a little bit more substantial to go with the cuisine. And then finally, a nice dessert-esque cocktail that doesn't really uh, overpower either the, uh, the dish, the last dish, or the cigar itself. And it's such an extraordinary experience because we always think, cool, I'm gonna do a cocktail and food pairing. We're doing a cocktail, food, and cigar pairing together yep. to really, you know, kind of bring that home, that celebration of everything gastronomy. And I think, of course, Davidoff Cigars fits so perfectly in there. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna mention, because we are in the Sylvester right now. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, another part of the Beaker and Gray family restaurant group. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the Sylvester, which we're sitting at right now. Sure. So the Sylvester is a Florida cocktail bar, right? We want to be the best bar in Miami from Miami. That is that's cool. That's what we're all about. And so uh, looking around, you know, our cocktails are inspired by local Miami places or people or things. Uh, there are pictures of me growing up catching fish around the place. I mean, there's my mom's piano is in the corner. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really like, it's a beautifully nostalgic, vintage, eclectic vibe here. And it's a lot of fun. And if you haven't been, the Sylvester is right in Midtown Miami. And it's incredible because I walk in here and you're right, I do get this beautiful Miami vibe. You know, we were just talking about right before we jumped um, into this conversation that even this table in front of us, this is, where is this from? So we found this table um, on a one of the websites where you can find things for sale. I don't want to say anything without having to deal with any uh, lawsuits, but uh, it is originally from the Fountain Blue, the original Fountain Blue, obviously not the rebuilt Fountain Blue. Their tables are still there. Incredible, incredible. And you're gonna see kind of vintage knickknacks all around this bar, but I think, you know, the important part is, is exactly what you said. You're taking um, local ingredients, um, local bartenders, mm -hmm. um, but really 
creating something extraordinary. Um, and this is, you know, for its short time being open because we got closed because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, because of the pandemic, that it is an award-winning bar, even within that short time. Yeah. So tell us when you opened, then how long you were open for, and then now we're open again. And I think it's only it was only a couple months, right? So we opened the Sylvester in April of 2019. We were able to keep it open a full year before we had a shutdown. And in that one year, I mean, we went from, you know, we opened with a pretty substantial amount of fanfare and it only went uphill. And then we were at our absolute peak and then we had to, of course, close. To be totally honest, there were times when we weren't sure we were going to be able to reopen because being closed for any period of time in the hospitality industry is very difficult. You know, a lot of your sales stop, but a lot of your expenses do not stop. So we had to balance everything out and find a way, and eventually we were able to reopen, and we've been open a whole week as of today. Incredible. Yeah. We talk about the importance of gastronomy, right? Obviously, that's very evident in a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Beaker and Gray, it's it's all over the place. How do you bring that into a place like this, right? Like you said, this is a cocktail bar, right? Mm -hmm. But what is the importance of the gastronomy aspect of of um, bringing that to this bar here mm -hmm. um, at the Sylvester? Sure. So, you know, gastronomy basically means anything that goes into your stomach and intestines, right? And Obviously, from a beverage standpoint, this being a cocktail bar, that's top of mind. But also simultaneously, we want to make sure that our guests are fully satiated, not just from the drinks that they have in their hands, but to the food they eat. So, you know, Chef Brian, Brian, as I call him, I didn't call him Chef Brian when we were cooking. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he's developed a menu here uh, that are basically local Miami favorites. Miami, of course, being the melting pot that everyone always says it is, is a mixture of uh, different cultures and cuisine from around the world, especially South, Central, and uh, Central America and the Caribbean. So those flavors mixed with the flavors from our cocktails really provide a holistic experience for all of that. So even at a cocktail bar, you can enjoy some pretty awesome food. Mm -hmm. um, of course, some pretty awesome cocktails. Uh, I like to say that, that, that this is one of the best bar teams here in South Florida. So it's so cool to be able to come back in here, open up. Uh, we like to say, you know, kind of support your restaurant, support your bars, and be patient with everyone because we're all still just starting to open, right? Um, since we do, and, and, and we should cap capture this moment in time, um, any challenges opening up? Is there a kind of a change of attitude? Are people excited to be out here? Yeah, uh, challenges opening up many. <laughs> you know, it's, we won't get into it. <laughs> yeah, it's it was a substantial amount of work to reopen this place. We did it in about two and a half weeks, which I commend my entire team for. And the it all plants together. are all still alive. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Plastic plants stay alive for a long time. Uh, but the team really pulled it together really quickly. Uh, I'm really proud of them. It was an awesome just thing to watch them work and really like they care as much about this place as I do and I hope that comes through to the guests that walk in here and get to experience this because you know without the team this is just you know four walls and you know some bottles on the back bar that's awesome man. and 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 you know first first and foremost before we end this cheers, cheers. again we're really excited to kick off uh, Davidoff Gastronomy with you mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go nationwide and it's going to be an incredible opportunity to see some of the best bartenders and chefs doing some extraordinary things. So we're really excited about it. But I think, you know, we do have a little outdoor spot. We can't smoke indoors in here, but we can definitely smoke outdoors. So I don't know if you want to yeah. join me for a millennium. Let's do it. Cheers, man. All right.